Hi guys and welcome to the video. So we're going to try something a little bit different from what I usually do on this channel. I'm going to be doing a painting. Now I'm a novice painter at the best of times. I haven't done it in quite some time so I'm just going to give this a go. This is going to be a Star Trek themed one. I've got some ideas about where it's going to go but I'm not entirely certain as of yet. Now, obviously, it's going to be a space painting, so I'm going to need a black canvas. Now, I'm going to start by applying some acrylic black to the canvas, letting it dry, and we'll then work on the star field. If you're new to the channel and you fancy having a look around, please feel free to do so. I do reviews for Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Picard, and most recently, the Orville. However, I thought I'd just try a little, something a little bit different. I also have absolutely no idea how this is going to turn out, whether it's going to be any good. That will be up to you guys, subjective opinions and all of that. Without further ado, let's crack on with the painting. As I said, I'm going to be using some acrylic black just as a background. So we'll start with that. It's actually a brand new tube of acrylic. So we want a uh, nice healthy dollop of that on the palette I've got here. This isn't my the palette I use for painting. It's, it's generally the, the base palette. It's wood, and to be fair, it's seen its fair share of action. So uh, let's just get this black applied to the canvas. Now I will be going all the way around the edges as this is quite a deep canvas. So I will be applying it to the edges as well. So I think that will give it some good contrast, certainly on a cream wall. So we're just going to start applying the paint nice and evenly where we can. We may take a couple of coats just to get it completely black. We're going to do the top first as I'm actually holding it by the edge. So I don't want to get paint everywhere. As you can see, it will appear as if there's a lot of gaps that will be solved by a second coat. As long as we get rid of the majority of the white in the canvas, it should work. Really work it in to the nooks and crannies and into the pattern itself. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, it's a bit thick, you just thin it out, and to do that, you just brush stroke in the opposite direction. Get rid of any excess that is on the canvas, and then you just brush it the other way. Looks pretty shiny, but to be fair, that's not really going to affect anything. It will dry in a a very matte finish so we're going to apply it to the edges as well as i've said so i'm just going to just lather it on i'm actually holding the frame within uh this wooden recess here a lot of these deeper canvases do have places to put your hands so so we just lather it on this edge and get paint on our fingers because that's just good old fashioned messy fun. Turn the canvas over and we'll do the same with the other sides. OK, 
Okay, two edges to go. Uh, you don't need to put an awful lot of paint on your palette because, to be honest, it spreads quite well, certainly on the first coat. All those knobs and crannies. Let's get it into all the corners. Just make sure that there's no white showing anywhere because that will really detract from the image. And in all honesty, the fact that I've painted it should detract from the image anyway, because I am such a novice. It takes a lot of courage for anyone who creates any form of art to actually go ahead and, and, and you know, put it out to the public. As you can see, my hand has gotten quite black. It's washable, so I'm just going to... Um, leave this canvas to dry we're going to wash my hands and we'll it should take around about 40 odd minutes to dry completely i'll probably uh put some heat on it as well just to try and help it dry just that little bit quicker okay so this is dry enough to apply a second coat we've got a little bit of a glimmer here but it's not too bad we're going to apply the second coat now it's much the same as it was before, just make sure you get good coverage. Okay, so you may have noticed I didn't go around the edges this time. That's simply because I don't feel that the edges will need a second coat because we're not putting any oil paint on the edges. Okay, so the canvas is mostly dry. We do have a few white spots where the original canvas colour is has broken through that's not a massive concern because this is space and what does space have if not a few stars i'm going to lay those down now and the way i'm going to do that is obviously with some white acrylic okay so i've got some white acrylic i don't really have any other color acrylic so we're going to have mostly white stars so what i'm going to do is open my acrylic as you can tell it's not been opened in a good long while it's nice and crispy and look at that as if by magic, I accidentally squeezed the tube and some stars have appeared on the painting already. <laughs> Things like this will happen. We just make the best of it that we can. Now, I could say at this point that it, it, that was a happy accident. And it really was a happy accident. But we're going to apply a lot more stars than that. Now, I've got on my palette some white acrylic, as you can see. Now, I have here a fan brush. This is quite generic fan brush. It's not one of my oil fan brushes. This is what we're going to use to apply our star field. Now, this bit can be tricky. I have done a star field before, but this bit can be very tricky. So we want to load a lot of paint onto the brush but we want to thin it out as much as possible. So you've got a nice thin edge. Now this will get a little bit messy, but there is plenty of opportunity to correct anything that happens. Also, we're going to technically um, flick the paint on. This can cause a mess, so do be wary of that and make sure your area is covered. So all I'm going to do is run my finger across the brush and try and get some of this paint onto the canvas by flicking it let's thin it out a little bit more as you can see stars start appearing some quite a big one there we will end up with a few dollops which won't look like stars we may be lucky may not get any that look like that you can have as few or as little stars as you want, but as long as the canvas is flat, 
you'll get quite a nice effect. You don't need to use a lot of paint. I'm just going to load a little bit more paint on, but really thin it out now. So as you can see on the palette, it's really thinned out, okay? Nice and thin. Lots of paint, but very thinly applied. Couple more elongated stars here. Not a big problem. And a couple of splodges, there's one here you might be able to see. A pretty good looking star field. I do want, however, a few more. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I like that. That's uh, pretty busy. Just put a few more in around the edges. And it's also great how random all of this is. You know, you can't control where everything goes. There's no, uh, there's no uniformity here. I think that looks pretty good as a star field. What we need to do now is keep the canvas flat. It must be kept flat. I'm going to wash my finger because it looks like I've been attacked by a chalk monster. And we're going to leave that to dry. And as soon as it's dry, we can just go over some of these little elongated star areas and just touch them up with a little bit of black. So as you can see, I've got the painting set up on an easel and we're going to start applying some of the base colours. But before we do any of the colours, we actually have to apply some liquid clear now this is bob ross we all know bob ross i actually have a bob ross bobblehead and he's going to be helping us through this painting where's some of that wisdom as inspiration bob yeah he's right this is a bravery test because at this point i have no idea how this is going to turn out the star field is a really easy thing to do, okay? You're only applying black acrylic and spraying white on, as you saw before, but this is where it gets a little crazy. Once we get past the point of applying paint, it's going to have whatever effect it's going to have. You will have to bear with me for this because I haven't done this in quite some time. Now, the liquid clear is an extremely uh, messy paint to get out of the tub it's also not been opened in a while so bear with me always handy to have baby wipes keep the jokes to a minimum please <laughs> but it's always best to have some just for cleaning up purposes now i'll apply it to my palette which you won't see which is to my uh, right scoop a bit onto the palette we'll see what how much of this we actually need I don't think you actually need a lot. Now, it's also really good to have some kitchen towel available just to wipe your brushes and your palette knife on. I've got some kitchen towel here. I'm just going to wipe the palette knife. And that will go straight into the bin. So I've got my two inch brush. I'm just going to start lathering this canvas. I can use a one inch brush, but to be fair, I'm not going to bother. Now, you'll instantly see this start to change colour. It's going to get a lot darker, and that's because you're putting that liquid clear onto it. And it's actually going to really bring the painting out. As long as you're thorough with your application, you will see a lot happening on the canvas itself. So you only want a very thin coat. You don't want to lather too much of this stuff on because it is... Uh, it does spread very well. And you'll actually be able to tell which parts of the canvas you've done, especially if you shine a light on it, because it's obviously a wet coat on a dry coat. Occasionally you'll get this. You probably won't be able to see it, but you do get brush hairs. And all I do to get them off is just brush them out. So I send the brush the opposite way. It's always best to have paper towel actually cut up into strips so you don't have to keep tearing bits off but we shall just persevere with that I'll hold the canvas distilled so it doesn't shake too much it's actually the 
canvas is actually quite loose, but it's okay. This is the most violent part of this painting, is certainly with regards to the canvas. I hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are enjoying it, smash that like button for me. Let me know that you're enjoying yourselves. Okay, so you can see that's a very, very thin layer of liquid. Uh, clear. We also have quite a lot of glare on the canvas now, so I'm just going to switch the light off on this, and I'll be right back. Ah, so much better. Okay, so now that the canvas is wet, obviously we, we don't want any of that nasty glare. So I'm going to seal the liquid clear up now, put that back in. Oh, man. Oh, and the worst has happened. It's actually gone through into the liquid clear. Oh, that's bloody marvellous. Super duper. It just makes such a mess. Right, so we're going to... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be cleaning this up for a week. It's gone all over. It's gone everywhere. It's no good, man. No good. Blooming liquid clear everywhere. I can't believe it. Uh, I'm actually going to wash my brush. And to wash my brush, I have a brush washing a bucket it's actually a sweet bucket but you just want to wash your brush there i don't have any other cameras going so i do apologize about that i'll just leave that in there now once we've used the two inch brush we don't need to use it again for this particular painting so i'm gonna just clean that brush off dry it off barbara style we'll put that to one side and I've actually cut up some kitchen towel, as you can see, and that'd be really good for cleaning our implements. Now, at this point, I don't know what is going to happen with this painting. I sort of got a rough idea in my head, but I'm not really sure where I'm going to take it. So we've got everything that we need. We've got a nice slick canvas. We're going to go from here and figure out what we're going to do. I want to start adding some colour. My main three colours are going to be phthalo green phthalo blue and alizarin crimson now the reason for this is they're nice transparent colors which means they won't show bright on the canvas until we manipulate them until we actually add some uh, titanium white which is what we're going to do later i had a thought about positioning and everything so we're just gonna see roughly where it takes us. I'm not too particularly too interested. I'm not particularly too interested about these, although I mentioned earlier, you can correct them. Uh, I may correct them at the end if, if the overall outcome allows me to do so. The way you can fix them is to get a very, very, very fine brush and split them down the middle so they just look like little specks. But for the time being, I'm actually happy with what we've done so far. Let's get some paint on the palette. Now, I do have a proper Bob Ross palette. I have sanded it down uh, the way Bob Ross used to. If you don't sand it down, the palette knife can catch in the corners. Um, whereas this got that really nice scrape effect. That'll drive some people nuts and send some people to sleep. I've got some liquid clear on there. I'm going to actually get rid of that now because I don't really need it there. So, yeah, the palette's, palette's reasonably clear. It's a bit shiny, but you'll get that because it's oil. So, uh, I think I'm going to start with a base of phthalo blue. Again, absolutely no idea how this is going to turn out. And that lid is on fairly thick. So we only want the smallest amounts. And by the smallest amounts, I mean the smallest amounts. These are actually, um, again, Bob Ross paints. Yeah. We like Bob Ross. And the way I'm laying them out on my palette is sort of around the same area. You don't want to sort of overfill your palette. That would be real bad, okay? Crikey. Oh, that hurt. <sighs> and you'll find that, they, that like I say, these are transparent colours. They won't exactly show up. You will see them go over the star field and you'll see the effect that they have. But the way I've got them laid out on my on my palette here is just next to each other. Now, I'm gonna take my smaller palette knife and just bring a little small section of them down like that, okay? And after each color, you just wanna wipe your palette knife. You just wanna flatten them out. That one actually went quite far. I do apologize for the camera angle on this. It's not exactly 
the best. I do only have one camera that I'm using to film. So I think I'm gonna start with the Thalo Blue. I'm just gonna go into the paint and you'll see, I'm gonna do this, just get it on, on the tip of the brush. You don't wanna to go too mad. Okay, so you just want it on the end of the brush. And I'm gonna start applying it to the canvas in as random a way as possible. Um, we want a th what I'm planning to do here, and I know I haven't mentioned it, is I'm going to I'm going to put a nebula in. Okay, hopefully as random as I can. I am um, something of an engineer, so I do have a keen eye for symmetry, which I have to try and let go of in this painting. So I'm going to start applying it, and you will see. On the canvas it will start to appear but it won't be very sort of obvious you just brush it down in random ways sort of arching ways and this will be the the middle of the uh, the nebula looks like it looks like a starfish at the minute but and as you can see some of the stars are starting to turn blue we want that we want the stars to to turn blue it, it sort of looks um, like it's got arms branching off, kind of like an explosive supernova. We want to apply a, a generous amount of this. We'll clean up some of these so it, these arms aren't as prominent. It's a very powerful colour, this, and it will pop as soon as we add titanium white here you will you'll see but the titanium white i'm hoping again this is what i'm hoping we'll just add a little bit of um, detail to the painting so we've got a nice sort of clear it's it's showing up a lot more on the camera than it is with the naked eye because the camera actually picks up quite a little, quite a lot more so what I'm doing here is I've got a, obviously you saw earlier, a pile of kitchen roll. I'm just cleaning the brush and getting some of the excess paint off. Um, and I'm going to wash my brush as well. Odorless thinners, as Bob Roth always used odorless thinners. I did too. I'm just running it through. I actually have a tray in a bucket. I'll take some photos and I'll put them up on the video because I am limited with my camera use. You want to try and get your brush as dry as possible. Bob Ross used to smack it against the side of his easel, beat the devil out of it kind of way. But I, uh, I've been, I've been taught a different way, and it, it does prevent a lot of splashing. Okay, so we're going into the green with the clean one-inch brush. Uh, we don't want to go over the blue but we do want to go sort of into it and around it and just allow it to blend you're only you're only sort of applying a little bit of this and you want to go around the blue mix it in blend it a little bit but not too much don't over blend that's how i've been taught never over blend because if you do you'll lose a lot of what you're trying to do it's a little clumsy. It does look a little clumsy right now. I don't want too much green on there. Again, you're going to get a little bit of glare in this corner. I do apologise, but I'm going to clean the brush off now that I've put that phthalo green in. It's a very powerful colour, that phthalo green. So we don't want to overwhelm it. This could be, by the way, a disaster. And if it is a complete disaster, I will still put the video up because it will be a learning experience for myself and hopefully for you as well to learn not what to do but hopefully it will um go very well so i've got the alizarin crimson in as well this will show up a lot more prominently than the colors i'm going to put a light halo and a couple of um other bits around so yeah you can see that's very prominent even to my eye i'm not going to use an awful lot of this because it will make it pop very random kills and fills and all sorts of random stuff going on here. I am at best a novice painter. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I've not plucked up the courage to do this. It's a difficult thing to try and get past. Certainly videoing yourself doing a painting. You open yourself up to ridicule. We've applied the base of this nebula 
this is the scary bit. This is where things are going to get a little dicey. This is where we're going to apply some titanium white, but we don't want a lot because it will ruin what's happening on this canvas. Now, I do have a Bob Ross fan brush. I'm a Bob Ross fan, I like Bob Ross. It, it looks green, it is green. You'll find that a lot when you're oil painting, everything just turns green in the end. It is a clean, dry brush though. And we're going to put some titanium white on this canvas. Now, you don't actually need to use a lot of paint. Bob Ross, he uses loads of paint. It's very expensive and I'm not a rich person. I can't waste too much paint. Here we go, care. Okay, so we're gonna use our palette knife again just to bring down this titanium white that I've put on here. We're gonna just bring it out to a stretch. Got a lot of color on at the moment. and I've only got four different uh, colors. We're gonna uh, just load the paint up onto the brush. Now, titanium white isn't like liquid white. It's very sticky. Oil paints are very sticky. So I'm just gonna put a little bit I don't want to go mad with the titanium white. Now this paintbrush is actually very long. The distance from the canvas to the camera is pretty much the length of the brush. So I'm going to be doing this very carefully. So we want to brighten up the center. So we're just going to apply just a little bit of titanium white. We don't want to at this point go into the colors too much. We just want to apply in brush strokes. This is what I'm doing. I'm applying in brush strokes. Now this isn't a tutorial video. I am terrible at painting. I am so much a novice. I haven't been doing it for very long. But you just want to start bleeding a little bit into the green, but not too much. You don't want too much green on your brush. Move outwards from the center. I'm remembering a lot of the things I've been taught. It looks stupid right now, but I'm hoping it will blend quite well okay. so you can see that the 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 white is actually brightened everything up you can now see it's actually looking quite good in camera not quite as good as, uh, with the naked eye but i can see a lot of the flaws and the faults so I'm, I'm, you might have noticed as well i'm using circular motion uh, it's always best to use circular motion. It eliminates uh, br brush strokes. I'm just going to clean my brush off a little bit, get rid of some of this excess paint. Then we're going to use a more titanium white. We're just going to apply this to the green areas now, and you'll see the green pop. Again, just circular motions. Kind of looks like a, a multicolored tribble at the moment. <laughs> it's actually quite um, striking, that is. I'm trying not to go into the red because I don't want the red to mix with the green too much. Yeah, that definitely looks like a rainbow triple. <laughs> it is a rainbow triple. And what you're seeing here is a rainbow triple. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. My little Bob Ross figure does say that, by the way. So I'm, I've got I've gone more into the white than I have the, the, the light blue. Uh, on my palette you notice I've sectioned it off so you've got the light blue there and you've got what remains of the titanium white that I've used this is where we're going to go a little bit into the red but we don't want to overdo it because it's going to send it pink and I'm not looking for a lot of pink you want to sort of little motions give this furry triple you see how the colors are really mixing now I'm going to try sending things in a bit of a different direction here. And all the colours are starting to mix now. It's actually not quite what I had in mind, but it may, with some blending, actually start looking pretty awesome. But it won't until we blend, of course. Okay, so that is pretty much my nebula. That's how it looks at the moment. Um, I might actually just put a bit more of that white color of that titanium white i'm going to clean my brush and actually put a bit more titanium white in there now 
I know what a lot of people will be saying. And certainly a lot of painters, if there are any painters watching this video. If there's indeed anybody watching this video, I know what you're going to say. Oh, you're doing it wrong. Right, and that's absolutely fine. You, uh, you can say I'm doing it wrong because I'm always looking to learn. I want to lighten that centre up a little bit. Okay, uh, make that lighter. And I'm always looking to learn. Okay, I'm always looking to learn something. I, I, but I am. I, I've said I am an absolute novice at this sort of thing. I don't do it that often. Uh, I have painted before. I'll, I'll post some of my paintings on the communities tab. But to be fair, you know, this is. This, I'm not an expert at this. So I'm going to take a one-inch brush, dry one-inch brush, and start blending. And uh, the way I'm going to blend this is just circular motion. Really get rid of some of those brush strokes. Uh, that looks, like, looks a lot better already. I want to keep the bright centre. And start blending. I'm blending in a, in a spiral because I want the colours to mix, but I don't want to get any green in that blue. I don't mind blue going out to the green because that's going to be, um, that's going to work in our favour. And some of these areas here, and these darker areas, I'm going to start blending out in some of these arms in the least symmetrical way that I can. Put some brighter colours in here as well. It's actually beginning to look a bit more like a wormhole than anything else. Let's just get rid of some of this excess paint that I'm picking up. You also find if you do not wash your brush and dry your brush properly, uh, you get um, this really strange sort of uh, gridded effect on your canvas uh, is with the reactions from the thinners and uh, you don't want to thin your painting too much. You can add thinners to a paint, uh, to an oil painting and it will enhance certain effects but it won't um, it won't serve it very well if it reacts. You get I, I've tried to do water effects where it has indeed reacted and you can see the the kitchen towel is getting absolutely uh, obliterated. It's always good to have as well uh, baby wipes. So that's good. Um, good thing to have. Very useful. So the brush is dry enough. I'm going to continue blending. Um, so I'm going to go up here. Blend into the red. A little bit. It's looking quite dull actually. I might brighten it up a little bit more by adding a little bit more titanium white. As you can see, it looks a little bit bland. The red's not popping as much. I might add a little bit of uh, a little bit more red. Love to hear your comments in the comments section if you uh, if you like what I'm doing here. I'm going to add a little bit more titanium white to places. I think get rid of these brush strokes down here. Let's make it a little mistier. Okay, that's that's actually not looking too bad. I'm quite happy with that. You, you, the, one of the things that I've been taught by my uh, painting tutor, and yes, I do have a painting tutor. She is an incredible artist, really. She's wonderful, and she's an absolutely uh, wonderful person. Is not to fiddle too much with the painting. Uh, I am, however, going to fiddle a, a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more of the titanium white just around some of these different areas, uh, adding a, a few sort of highlighted areas, um, a little emphasis on highlights. I'm going to make it fairly sort of random with lighter and darker sections. Always very good to put in lights and darks. It would be sort of brighter in the middle. It does look a little bit like a wormhole. I might make it a wormhole instead of a nebula. See how the titanium white with these transparent colours, and this is partly what Bob Ross does, is 
uses it to highlight certain areas. I don't want colours over mixing though. Yeah, I think I think this is going to be. I think it started as a nebula. It's going to actually be a, a wormhole because it's very wispy. I think the colours are over blending a little bit too much. Um, we'll see if we can uh, sort this out because I'm I'm not happy. Generally, not happy with 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 that. It's, it seems to be over blending a little bit. What I'm actually doing here is I think I've gone the wrong way with this. I might blend that in. Is what I'm doing here is very gently with as as my tutor likes to say, two hairs and some air, very gently going over this, trying to pick up any excess paint. I think what I'm gonna do just to add a little bit um of sort of randomness to this is I've just picked up a little bit of the the red and I'm just going to do some red areas here kind of like uh, little separate pieces of cloud you see how it's spreading as well um, because that's that's what it does it it, it's, it, it mixes with that um, as it ended up more pink and a lot brighter I don't really want that also mixing. Painting is a rare pleasure for me. I really enjoy painting. Let's dull that down a little bit. You don't want to overfill your canvas. The wonderful thing about space, other than when things orbit each other, is things go off in the most random of ways. So I'm grabbing the the uh, corner of my brush here and just adding some um, quite wispy effects. Brian, Brian, wispy. We like wisps. Uh, anyone who follows my channel knows that I do enjoy doing the odd, odd impression. I, I don't go mad. No, no, not mad. I'm crazy, but not mad. So I'm going to put some different highlighted parts of green in there some of the mixtures you know, just a little bit of wispiness down here just make it all nice and wispy and follow those lines I think maybe I might be going a bit too crazy here it's important not to not to overdo things by uh, adding too much you can overwhelm a painting to be fair, I think a lot of this is going to be covered. I'm not happy, generally not happy with that. It seems to have gone wrong. Maybe blend it into that a little bit. This looks like a series of clouds. If we blend it in, it tends to make it less obvious. Oh, that's looking a bit better. I'm happy with that. It's less prominent. Looks a little bit. If you look at nebulas in general, they tend to be very random and they have sort of prominent parts and less prominent parts. So, yeah, I'm happy. Oh, that looks good. That looks better. Much better. Okay. Now, there is a bit of a surprise coming with this uh, painting. It's supposed to look beautiful, but it, it doesn't right now. What I'm what I'm also finding with this is the lack of stars in this nebula. It's quite a thick nebula, and I'm okay with that. I'm not. I don't really have a problem with that. But I, I am going to add some very bright stars later on. It's certainly in the in the highlighted sections uh, of of this nebula. I have to make the decision actually of whether it's a nebula or it's a wormhole. I think it looks pretty much like a nebula so let's just blend all that in i don't want to get rid of my star my stars but we can put a few random stars in place you can see the stars in the background and in generally well it's not too bad so um yeah there is a bit of a surprise with this painting i'm going to be putting in um a borg cube that's what i've decided to do 
is to put in a board cube. How it's going to look, I do not know. The front face of the board cube will be lit up quite nicely. I picked a board cube because I'm an amateur and I, there's no way in hell I'm painting the Enterprise. So it's going to be quite a generic looking board cube, as board cubes are generic looking. So for the board cube, I'm going to be using these two first and I'm going to be putting on a lot of paint. First, we put the base coat on it and then we go from there. Now, I personally think this could do with being a little bit brighter. I know it looks bright on the camera, but it doesn't really uh, scream brightness to me, uh, certainly by the naked eye. So I'm going to give my brush a bit of a clean so we're going to apply a little bit more titanium white just to the center and, and maybe put a few branches of brighter uh, color in there because i don't i just don't think it's uh, as bright as i want it so let's load the locking the camera here i want the the middle to be brighter so let's apply the titanium white and make the um, middle a bit brighter. Let's make this arm and this arm a little bit brighter. Let's pop that there. Brighter. Again, you can blend all this out. It's not going to really gonna be too much of an issue. It won't. You won't spoil the effect too much. Looks crap. But it, it won't, I promise. Okay, so um, I've actually got my um, two inch brush. I'm going to use that because my one inch brush is currently drying. So let's um, brighten up this centre first. Just circular blending motion, that's all it is. Let's get rid of some of that and all those brush strokes. That looks quite quite good. Some brighter areas going down here as well. Circular motion and some circular motion here. Some brighter sections here. Thalo colours are intense colours, okay? They are genuinely intense colours. It takes, so it draws some of that other colour just to darken it out. You can really tell I'm a novice painter, can't you? Things are starting to overblend now. If I just blend that out. It's all going horribly wrong. Get rid of that. Blend it out. This is possible as well to accidentally go nuclear on a painting. See, I like that because that's created quite a nice mist. So I'm going to leave that alone. If you wish to get rid of brush strokes, just paint in the opposite direction. Very gently. Again, I do not know what I'm doing. I'm simply just painting. So, and you're watching me paint. And that's pretty much how, how we're doing this. Oh, I'm going to break the rule here and fiddle a bit because I, I need that to be a bit wispier. I'm actually happy with how that's turned out now. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to touch it anymore, I promise. So as my teacher would say, this is very, very, very talented um, Bob Ross trained artist. Her name's Jane. I may uh, post a link to her website in my description. I'm currently just putting some midnight black on my palette and some titanium white. I'm going to take a little bit of both colour and mix them together. You don't want a lot of midnight black because that's going to um, make it too dark. I'm going to add a bit more white and create a light grey. Again, I don't want to make it too dark, but 
I don't want it too light either. We also don't need the marble effect for this one. Actually, I'm going to scrape on to my knife and we're going to draw out this ball cube. Now, as you can see, this is the grey I've got. It looks kind of orangey, uh, probably to you, but it's not to me. That's a nice thick roll of paint there. We're going to need to decide where the board cube is going to be. I, I want it to be roughly here. I think that'll look quite cool, but we'll see. We'll see. So we just start applying paint. This is where you got your bravery test. As, as little Bob said earlier, your bravery test. And we're going to draw out a cube. Now, again, the engineer in me says that things must be precise but with oil painting you do not need precise you just need to scope out your rough dimensions okay so that's going to be the base for my ball cube i think that's a cube and not a rectangle <laughs> i want to apply enough to it. It also needs to be three-dimensional. Looks blooming atrocious, that does. I can only apologise for this. Amateur hour. You're an amateur, you are. Let me take some of this excess paint off now. paint off that I can. <laughs> Not exactly looking like a cube yet, but it will. Call us here. What? What? Oh, knocking the camera again. What we got? We got sap green. Sap green is pretty bright. We want a selection of different colors we want black we want gray which we've got as our base we want to try and apply the paint quite thick just to give it some texture and you'd be using the palette knife for this because it's got a lovely straight edge on it and it's too bad i don't have a particularly steady hand so i'm going to do the outline I'll try and lean in this oil paint and i'm just going to apply the outline We are the badly painted Borg. You shall be assimilated and painted like one of my French girls. You know what? In fact, I've started with the dark colour, but I've got my outline. I'm just going to scrape some black into this, give it some texture underneath, and then put the highlights on. Okay. The other thing I will say about painting, okay, this is really important. Do not kick yourself if things go wrong. You're, you're practicing, and if things go wrong, the beauty with oil paint is that you can always put it right. If it goes terribly wrong, it goes terribly wrong. You just start again. Try again.
It's actually the most difficult bit. Is this damned board cube? I want on this under the board cube to be quite dark, and the sides to be quite dark. This could go horribly wrong. It probably already is, in your opinion. But this is the. You don't know if you don't try. And as long as you don't keep making the same mistakes, you are able to correct your errors and realise your errors. I think you actually you're not going to do too badly. Also, don't ever think that you're going that you're perfect because nobody is. I want some texture with this because it, if you add some texture, it looks like there's a lot going on. Which on a ball cube, there's a lot happening on a ball cube. I want this front to be defined. It's a bit pretty hard because I don't have the most steadiest of hands. I have to actually hold my wrist with the other hand. <laughs> I'm going to go for a mixture, a marbled mixture of midnight black and titanium white. And what we're going to do is a series of lines on the front like that and they don't have to be symmetrical or evenly spaced we want them to be uneven in fact because the ball cube although it's symmetrical it's not actually even i'm just adding lines that's all I'm doing here, it's just adding lines, lines of paint. Yeah, probably, a lot, a, a lot of people are probably going, oh my god, this guy's shit. Yes, this guy's terrible, what he's doing, what he's doing, he's making a right mess. And you're right, I am, but I'm having fun, hopefully you are too. So randomly... Put some other cross bits in. And that make sure this has an, an outline on the front. And what I'm doing now is just running the palette knife just across some of these wavy areas of this ball cube because <laughs> it's beginning to not look straight. And again, you know, it doesn't have to look straight. It, it, it just... Oh dear, made a cock up there, haven't I? In that case, I'm just going to add more black to the underside. And just make that, straighten that up a bit. Okay. And we can bring this down ever so slightly. It doesn't look particularly straight, but it doesn't have to at this point. There we go. Right. 
sin este aquí. If you highlight, you can see my hand shaking in terms to do that. I'm not the world's steadiest hand. Honestly, I'm trying not to speak too much. Because it makes me shake. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add a, the tiniest amounts of sap green because the ball colours are green, and you can see on some of the mo ah bloody hell, some of the modern Borg ships, green definitely does show through. Bloody hell, that is tight. Oh, my hands are raw. Right. I'm going to do use this sap green. It's not exactly the brightest green. I might mix it with a little tidgy bit of, 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 of white just to make it a little bit brighter. And again, you want a little bit of texture. So I'm just going to put the odd dash of green in there. We're going to go into some of the darker green and just put a little bit in the back there. Now this is still sap green that I'm using. Yeah, but it's the darker, it's the unmixed sap green. I'm just putting in a few little bits there. I'm going to make that a little less prominent there. Whew, I mean, yeah, so far this is not going too badly. Uh, it's, it's, it's never going to be what you expect it to be, okay? It just can't be what you expect it to be. But to be fair, that I don't think that looks too bad. I'm going to put a, 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 few, um, a few bits of dark in here. The thing is, you need you need the paint to stick. You need the paint on your knife to stick to the canvas. You don't want. So I mean, the Borg ship is done. It's there. It's hanging in space. It's got quite a lot going on in this in this painting. So there tends to, tends to be a few stars around there. So into to do that, I'm going to use. I've decided some cadmium yellow okay and uh, all of these haven't been used in so long these lids are just stuck on oh yeah shocker well that's really painful okay so a tiniest amount of cadmium yellow there are blue stars as well you you can get blue stars and red stars and i'm going to use the bright red as well that's uh oh light red ah, bob ross calls it bright red and try a bit of out Indian yellow. Ah, bugger. Right. I actually have to use a wet wipe on this. Oh. Yeah. Oh no, that's twisting. It's twisting the top. Come on, you little bugger. Oh, there you go. Felt it pop. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. Now I've got a detail brush here. Uh, it's 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 all right, but it is also again a Bob Ross one. So we've got um, a bit of Bob Ross going here as well. I'm just going to thin these paints out a little bit, and all I'm doing is just adding a little tiny bit of thinner paint thinners to each one. Okay, so the thinners have essentially done this. They've made the paint nice and thin we've got red stars we've got yellow stars going here and all i'm literally going to do is just pop stars in randomly okay because we've got the the, the backdrop stars we just want to pop 
a star in. I want a bit more paint than that. Dad, come on, danger man. Get the get the program. I do you want some foreground stars? That's what I was looking for. That's the word I was looking for. Foreground. Okay, there's uh, there's one, and we'll we'll do one up here where it's brighter. Because what they tend to do, stars, they tend to illuminate things. Who knew? Okay. I'm just randomly placing stars everywhere. Or do I dare? Do Am I that brave? Put a star in the middle, like make it like the cat's eye in the middle. Um, I mean, you got some prominent stars, but what I was thinking of doing actually is putting a little top of the ball cube there. Okay, uh, so that I, I think that's it for the yellow stars. I don't want to go overboard. Yeah. I don't want to go overboard. Okay, so pop a red star in there. Maybe up there. Because you see, a lot of, of, of stars have, like, um, you see this, this, this light red, you can really see it, it really pops. You don't want to overuse it, you don't want it to be too bright, because it will, um, well, <laughs> it, will, it will enable you to have a bad time. I'm going to mix some of my remaining... Um, Titanium white, what's left with some of my phthalo blue, so with a bit of thinness and Indian yellow. I say Indian yellow, it's turned to Indian green, but I'm just gonna pop in some more random stars in the foreground. Beginning to look a bit stupid now, if it's become a little bit too much. Oh my word. See what we can do. So you can sort of fade things out into the background just by blending them out a bit. And you make it sort of part of the painting. So stars that you're not happy with actually become, you know, part of the painting. Now, this one. I actually want to apply quite a lot here. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> oh, this is going to be difficult. There you go. Some of it is starting to react. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it there. That actually doesn't look half bad. <laughs> I really don't know. You let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's get rid of that. Because that's starting to react. It's, you see with a lot of it, it's reacting. The thinners are starting to react. So I, I, you know, I need to blend that in a bit more. Slightly down here. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. <laughs> there you have it. I've done an oil painting. I have no idea really how that went. I, I'm reasonably happy with it. It doesn't look too bad. 
it, it, it's it's my first attempt at something like this so um there you go i really do hope you've enjoyed this video and enjoyed me prattling on and, and scraping away and uh doing this painting if you want to see more of this sort of thing then let me know uh, in the comments section i would be uh i really enjoyed it i'll be happy to do this sort of thing again i think maybe maybe get some more practice in beforehand perhaps but there we go you will be assimilated resistance is futile and i imagine an old man picard is probably um very very afraid because it's the borg you see i hope you enjoyed this video please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel until next time you look after yourselves you look after one another thank you for your patience take care bye bye for now Shelter, I know I'll only find